would you like to jump into? Menu madness. Well, it's. I don't think it's fair for me to start the menu conversation because this entire menu conversation is going to center on literally one topic, which is the thing you hate most in the entire universe. Like worse than like Nazis <laughs> or like racism or poverty or anything. You hate this more than all of those. And what is the thing I hate? You hate it when someone does not have a focused menu and places all the products under a single heading that's like shop. Oh! And then it's a drop down with all the products. Oh. But then there's 10 other things in the menu that are not shop. Oh, oh even hearing you describe it. Oh, geez, Rick. Uh, so, yeah. So I think main menus are like one of the easiest overlooked optimizations for most Shopify stores. Because it's one of those, it's deceptively simple. Like, it's one of those things where you could, the default setup just is wrong inherently. All right. So they, my, and when people go, oh, what's your, what are your pet peeves about Shopify stores? I'll tell you right now, it's number one, if your main menu has a home link. Number two, if all of your products and collections live under a shop drop down, well, you get less ire if you use a mega menu for that. But still, don't do it. And then if you've got like all kinds of nonsense not related to shopping in that main menu. This drives you me know, insane. I wasn't thinking about this when I picked the store we were doing today, but you're going to have a lot of feelings about the store we're doing today. Oh. <laughs> okay, good. It'll be an illustrated example. <laughs> so, well, th think about this. If you go, those are the, well, those are the three things you shouldn't do, right? Is you don't need the home link. Why? Because everyone knows they can click the, uh, the logo to go back to home. They could use the back button. And in e-commerce, realistically, the home page is not that important once they have started shopping, right? The home page is essentially the storefront. It's an overview. What and when they go to a collection or product page, now they're inside the store and shopping. That home link really does not need to be in the main menu at all. Ever. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why we use the metaphor of the funnel. In that, you know, every time they make another step down the funnel, you kind of don't want them to go backwards. Like that's, exactly. that's a loss if they have to go back. And that's the same reason why I don't like having social media icons or even blog links in the main menu or in the header, because those things were meant to get people to the site, right? A social media presence, an ad or a shared post got them to click through to the site. Let's not send them back to the psychologically addictive network. And like, say with the blog. The blog existed to drive organic search from Google to the site. Why are we sending them back to it? We just want them to shop. Um, so that, but if, if you look at uh, any major online store, Amazon, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, their main menu will exclusively link to products or categories. That's it. There is nothing else in there. Maybe there's like a comparison or decision site, but that's just another, you know, an alternative to a shopping page. It's just a variation on a collection page, really. Um, so that's, I mean, if it's an online store, it needs to be ex focused exclusively on shopping, that main menu. Everything else can live in a top menu. It can live in a uh, in your footer links, and people will know to find it there because that's also how all the major retail websites do it. All the other info goes into the footer. Uh, or if you absolutely need it, we could do like a little support drop down and literally call it that. It's the last link in the main menu. It says support and it link and then have some items under it like FAQ, manage my return, where's my order? So an order uh bold returns manager and vent off order lookup will work for those two, and then a contact us. Uh boom, there I've got like all my my scenarios covered. And then that frees up that rest of that main menu to just be categories and shopping. <sighs> Now, the reason I think people screw this up is, number one, the def when you spin up a Shopify store, that default main menu is like home. I think it, it just has like home and shop in it. It does, yeah. So out of the box, Shopify's going, hey, here's what you need. Um, and then they just, rather than revise those, they slowly add stuff to it. And then pretty soon you have like this gigantic unwieldy menu. So what do you do? Well, you, the Shopify menu editor is very easy. You start dra you drag and drop the stuff under shop. So I get why this happens. Um, so what do we do instead? Well, I think the, you know, I like that, that support example. Like first, just remove all this stuff that's non-shopping related, I think is the easy answer. So footer, top menu, and if you have to, we could put it in 
a support men drop down at the end of the main menu. But this is my that's your backup plan if you don't have any other options. Um, well, and I think there I think there's space to um to have not uh to have a high up navigation in the page but not necessarily a main navigation in the page. You know, I think a lot of what talk we me think through that. Sort of like um you know that area sort of an area up top where we have like a notification bar or whatever. Like uh, we, there's a lot of stores that have two or three little support type links up there. That's the top maybe menu, like, about like us, Turbo or, like, has that top us. menu above the logo. Yeah, I'm talking. I'm talking about something like that. Whereas, like that's yeah, not yeah, the I like main that. menu, but it's not necessarily hidden down in the footer. It's a and secondary think, header menu. I think, and I think the main sin, the main sin we want to eradicate is mixing. I'm going to call those supporting links. Mixing supporting links with shopping links. I don't right. think it should. It shouldn't be in a giant pile. That doesn't mean the supporting links need to be hidden. Maybe they. Maybe it works better for them to be not only down in the footer. But your best case scenario is to not mix supporting links and shopping links, which right. is like that's truly the sin that we hate. Yes. So we've got like those informational interior brochure pages, right? We want to get those out. That's step one. Then step two, all right, at this point, we're left with just a single link that says shop, probably, and it's a big drop down. Get rid of shop. Just drag all of that stuff out into parent categories. So let's say you're an apparel retailer and you sell uh, men's and women's clothing. Okay, men is a drop down. Women is a drop down. And then like new and sale. And the idea like men and women can have um, big mega menus, right? That would be one way to do it. Or... Actually, a really good apparel menu, mega menu, is uh, Hoonigans, the Hoonigan.com. That one's all custom oh. that we did. I like that a lot. Yeah, and I mean, in terms of mega menus, well, first off, I think you dove too quick into mega menus. So first off, take whatever your, whatever your mega top, menus advance. It is, it's an advanced thing to set up. It's an advanced thing. I think the thing is to take your top level navigation categories that are under shop i mean under and shop hopefully you only have like four or five choices pull those five choices out and make them the main menu there you go now I, okay you could have drop downs under those and now those drop downs can be regular or they could be mega menus you know if you want to get crazy with it okay but i think that's the first step is to break that shop menu out into the into it just being your sole main menu all right, step, step one, all the info, interior brochure stuff leaves, goes elsewhere, top menu, drop down or footer menu. Next, we break out my shop menu into parent categories. So if it's like shop and then, you know, men, women, shirts, pants, shoes, boots, whatever. All right, we start breaking those out by just making them their own parent level categories in the menu such that we don't need shop. Another rule of thumb is, you know how phone numbers are, are seven digits? Well, that's because seven digits is around like the most people can work with in their head without writing it down. So I try to limit each individual link list to five items if possible. Right. So my main menu would have like five parent categories and then you know maybe seven max. And then each drop down menu in there ideally has a max of five items or it's a mega menu. OK, we can have like, you know, uh, those are five columns and maybe it's five link lists in there and each has five items max. So I want to do that. Yeah. And I mean, the what's the math there? We now have 25 things yeah. inside our menu. If you can't if you can't narrow your store down to 25 different collections, you sell too much stuff. <laughs> Either well, it, <laughs> another thing that uh merchants who are early in their experience do is like, all right, the first thing is the like home shop about us contact look in main menu. All right, you move yourself past that. Then the next thing you do after you listen to some some jackass named Kurt tell you that you did it wrong, you get the the next thing that people do wrong is they they go too far the other way and they get too granular. And that's where you see it's like, you know, a drop down menu and it's like shop, plants, perennials, evergreen, hot and like it dr drills down three drop down menus. And the last one is like a literal product link. You don't have to get that granular with it you know if you take me to a collection page that has 24 items on it that's completely fine then i could use tag filtering a sidebar filter uh sorting i could figure it out from there if you got that far the next thing you could do is use google analytics to figure out revenue per collection per product type per page and then use that to resort the menu so that 
if possible, like, you know, sometimes grouping these things, there's a natural sense and order to it. Um, but ideally, then you could use Google Analytics to decide what comes first in the list. So the higher, the stuff more likely to be purchased should go further up in the list, sooner in the list, whatever. Now, let's say you're really struggling with this. You're like, I have tried. I cannot wrap my head around it. All right. The, the easy way out, not the easy way out, but the, the best solution here is pretty low tech called a card sort exercise. Take all your links, print them on a piece of paper, cut it out, glue them to index cards. And this is, I had, have just done this for uh, a sutra.com. I'm about to do it for harney.com. The, they had big menus and like at, a, so at some point, the menu gets so big where you're like, I just can't keep all that in my head and figure out how this thing should be arranged. Sorry, right, you get, you make an index card for every single link and parent category. And then, uh, sort them into piles, into groups where you're like, okay, you know, what if, which of these things make sense together? And if you get, want to get really fancy, you have multiple people do it individually and seek to try and come up with a consensus. But even if you just do it yourself, you'll be better off. Um, and then from there, then start laying them out on the ground and rearrange your menu that way. Like I literally sit on the floor with these index cards and rearrange them to get to my darn menu system. That sounds good. <laughs> okay yeah no it, it's yeah so from the the last one i did it was great like i arranged it all on the ground i took a photo of it and then i came down the next day like i knew i was getting close but i wasn't happy with it i came down the next day and discovered that our uh, robot vacuum had also decided to rearrange it there were just like cards everywhere so fortunately i taken a photo rearranged it again and then once I'd slept on it, and this is often the case with, with decisions, once I slept on it, then I was like, okay, it made way more sense, and I was able to just quickly rearrange it, take a picture of it, send it to the client, go, hey, how does this look? What do you think? Um, and then rearrange from there. So I like those card sorts. Anybody could do it. It's low tech. You just need index cards. I guess you don't even necessarily need that. You just print it on a piece of paper and go. Yeah. If you have, like, eight items, obviously we don't have to do this, but, you know, if you've got... In our example, you could easily get to 20, 25 items, 25 to 50 items in a big menu is not crazy. And that's where these card sort exercises are helpful. Yeah, that's if you, that's if you really have crazy amounts of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then, so I guess then we, we could move on to mega menus. And, Whoa! you know, mega, mega menus are just, instead of text in the, instead of only text in them, you have... You know, like categories, product listings, image call to action images, that sort of stuff in a big old menu that has a bunch of things in it. And now, if you want a great a great mega menu example, te check out Keysmart, get keysmart.com. We just launched Oh, them. that one's so nice. So pretty. I know. That's yeah, that's the turbo mega menu with some bonus modifications by me um, to add new types inside of them. You know, and and a, and a good written mega menu is almost like your homepage in that it has different little section blocks in it, and then you could add new blocks and then rearrange them and move them around. So the uh, Mega Menu allows you to like get way more information than just like shoes in there. You could have pictures of shoes. You could have a listing of the best-selling shoes. Yes. Because you're using up the entire screen real estate. The, uh, yeah, I like that. The downside to the Mega Menu is there... They could be fiddly and a little technical to set up. Many themes now support a mega menu. So it's like, number one, does your theme support it? And then if it does, don't just go trying to poke around in the theme to figure it out. I could not even do that. I owe, if it's a new theme I haven't played with, I got to set up the mega menu. I go find a sc their screencast video on how to do it. Watch that. And then you won't be tearing your hair out. You'll understand. Okay, this is how I do it. And if your if your theme doesn't support a mega menu, I know like we talk about when should I upgrade themes? That's sort of a you should upgrade themes level issue, I think, because I well, think let's any, say any theme worth its salt released in the last two years has a mega menu. Yeah, that's probably true. Do you uh, do you have an estimate of like all right, I got to pay a designer developer to build a mega menu for me into my theme? What does that take? How realistic is that? Um, well, I've done it before, so I don't think it's that crazy. Like, I have it. Like, I have, like, so, the code for it saved. Plausible. So I could pop it in there. Yeah, it's plausible. Um, uh, I mean, it would take, it takes a couple days. I mean, it would take a day or two. It would take a day or two, but that's also because 
I literally have one in my back pocket that I've okay. written that we've injected into other people's themes. I think I did that for um, uh, who are the guys that do the workout stuff? <laughs> well, I don't know if it's going to be expressed to anybody. I'm not that into the gym, so I don't remember. <laughs> The women's workout stuff. Constantly gear. varied gear. The leggings. Yeah. Constantly varied gear. Yeah. They, I wrote that. They needed an entire mega menu from scratch. You also wrote that drawer cart, and I designed that. I think their drawer cart's yeah. really cool. I agree. Yeah. It's a good, good quality drawer cart. I'm writing. I actually, I've been writing down our, our menu men, mega menu examples and like good menu examples for people to check out. I put down Keysmart, yeah, don't, Hoonigan, CVG. Don't look at constantly varied gear. Look at Keysmart. Keysmart's the the true winner. Yeah, Keysmart's really good. It's uh, image driven. It's not heavy. And one of the really clever things that site does is some of the parent they've got the support stuff in the main menu, but the shopping links are all bolded, and then the support and info links are not. So it makes it feel like it's a secondary menu, but it's really just the same main menu. How does that work? Where it figures out how does it know which to bold? Do you literally just count? In CSS? Um, is it nth of type? Well, it does a thing where where it's... Uh, no, because, I mean, there's, like, the trigger it has to put on, like, this has a child menu or whatever. Um, and then, you know, I just also... You know, to inject, like, the arrow on the right side of it? Like, the little down carrot? The little drop-down arrow? Yeah. yeah. So it's, like, it has to find out which one has a child in order to inject that arrow. I just then mimic that exact same thing to be like oh also when you inject the arrow make the parent bold oh so it's if it's a mega menu it becomes bolded yeah oh I'm pretty sure okay yeah i think that's what you did cool cool uh let's see what we got here do you want i mean i think that about oh, yeah. covers that, the mega menu. that's what it is i on key smart if it triggers a menu mega menu it doesn't have an arrow it instead makes it bold so I just swapped out that functionality. 